exactly one year before Martin Luther King Jr. was viciously assassinated, on April 4, 1967, he spoke out publicly for the first time against the war in Vietnam. It was against the advice of his colleagues who feared it would deflect from the Civil Rights Movement. And on the next day, he was trashed by famous papers like the New York Times and Washington Post asking, what do you know about foreign policy? When asked why he spoke out against the war, he said two things very simply. Look who's fighting and dying in Southeast Asia. These are my people. These are my brothers and sisters. And two, I won the Nobel Peace Prize. It is my duty to speak for peace. In his famous speech, Beyond Vietnam, he warned of the triple threat of racism, economic poverty, and militarism. Militarism, the planning for war, the spending for war, the preparing for war, and the aggression of war. King should not only be memorialized with his monument on the mall, his name should be inscribed on the Vietnam Wall Memorial. For those dangers and those triple evils are real and present problems today. Here to talk to you about King's opposition to racism, poverty, and militarism in his own word is someone you have seen many times in the comfort of your living room on television, in the dark creative space of movie theaters on film. But today, today you will see him in real time. He is not only a skillful and talented actor, he is equally a very committed social justice activist. Raised in San Francisco, whose parents, both parents were postal workers and union organizers and members of the NAACP, he joined the Civil Rights Movement when he was in ninth grade. He has been a social justice activist since, a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations and currently ambassador for UNICEF. Around the world, he has spoken for economic rights, civil rights, justice, environmental justice, and opposition to climate problems, in addition to his work on education and arts. Please join me and welcome actor and social justice activist Danny Glover. I tell you that wind is something else. But you withstood the rain and you're back with us. <laughs> Look here, I, I can't tell you what a, what a great gathering here. I, I would like to thank the organizers of Act Now Unite to End Racism, who graciously invited me to introduce this call to action. In the perhaps the most iconic moment in his career, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood not too far away here, from here, where we are right now, and called on our nation to awaken and to confront its shameful bigotry and to transform itself into a beloved community. Dr. King's voice, his call to action, echoes through the halls of history, pulsating reminder for us to continue to work for justice. Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King was both the map and the compass the America, for the American people. There is no singular explanation that can be do justice to the legacy of a man who fully embodied, but to do his memory to justice, we must unlock our potential to live and work in his spirit. At around 6 p.m. on Thursday, August 4th, 1968, the United States lost the captain of its moral destiny, the one most uniquely suited to help it, mass, ma, to help it master its moral faith. Although our civic discourse in the past half century have often reduced Dr. King to a brief snippet of one of his many dreams, the enduring potency of his legacy lies in his work opposed the, oppo to oppose the false teachings 
of unchecked militarism and unrestrained capitalism. While racism was the context for its activism, Dr. King saw and made us see the ways in which racism intersect with other issues, namely poverty and militarism. Dr. King understood with absolute moral clarity that this nation's path toward forward required not only to face the fullness of its past wrongs, but also to make a making corrective amends for them in substantive corrective terms. In Dr. King's speeches and writings, our nation found solace and meaningful guidance, well, as well as an honest reflection of the wickedness and animated, so animated much of our history. On the 50th anniversary of his death, a time in which the United States yet again faces the kind of of social and cultural strife we never thought we'd ever see again. What we are, what, what we are, what are we to make of Dr. King's legacy and the progress that we so earnestly thought we had made? Dr. King's life showed us the power of being unafraid to advocate for truth plural truths. Dr. King was unafraid to reach across, this, across some of this country's most treacherous divides, race, class, gender, sexual orientation, and religion, to build relationships that gave rise to coalitions, from working alongside with white activists to drawing on the spirit, spiritual teachings of, of Sajagrata, that word rooted in Hinduism, and collaborating with LGBT luminaries such like Vanyard Reston and James Baldwin and socialists like Jack O'Dell. Dr. King showed us that differences need not be limitations in forming civic relationships, especially when those relationships are root rooted in a, in a sincere regard for truth and justice. The truth can and does set us free, but it cannot defend itself. As socially and politically engaged people, we must not allow the truth to lose ground. Just as we arm ourselves with the truth, we must arm the truth with ourselves, our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our very soul. As a new generation of young people follows in Dr. King's footsteps, we must nurture their inborn orientation toward justice, towards truth, towards fairness. We must show them how to free themselves with the truth and how to, to protect the truth for the sake of humanity's future. We must resist the tendencies toward confiding hero, hero worship, worship we're doing the work of Dr. King's that Dr. King's legacy demands. Dr. King saw himself as a part of a movement, not as the movement. Everything he did was firm, firmly was firmly within the realm of human ability, and everything he dreamed for us was within the realm of human possibility. He, we know him to be a prophetic. Prophet, prophetic, but what, what was his prophecy? What were the ways in which Dr. King foretold our present state of affairs? And what path forward did he chart for us? To move beyond Vietnam, the most intractable global conflict of his day, Dr. King successfully argued one year to the day before his assassination that we must prioritize programs of social uplift over military defense. It is, it is only through elevating our society and through elevating and loving the best in every one of us will we survive those wars together. Dr. King called on us 
to undergo a revolution of values when he testifies, when machines and computers, profit motives and property rights are considered more important than people, the giant triplets of racism, extreme materialism, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. We have seen the impact of automation in our labor markets, racial and religious animus in our politics, and the continued tendency toward valuing material wealth over human decency. None of us can say with any deep honesty that Dr. King would be satisfied if he were here with us today not when we have con a continued to continue to delude ourselves into believing the myth that capitalism grew and prosperity out of Protestant ethics of hard work and sacrifice. Not when we are yet as a society to reckon deeply with the fact that capitalism was built on the exploitation and suffering of black slaves and continues to thrive on the exploitation of the poor, both black and white, and both here and abroad. Not when deportations, police violence, hate groups, militarist belligerence, mass shootings, and income inequality are our society's most pressing challenges. The three stained evils of our society, militarism, poverty, and racism create continual social upheaval, leaving the most righteous among us, our children, to rally in defense of their most basic asset, their lives. Dr. Clean wanted for, wanted them. He wanted our society, a society of all people all over the world, to abandon its march towards spiritual death and to embrace politics, indeed civic religion, that authenticates us all through our shared humanity. Our humanity was enough in the world for Dr. King, the King to work so valiantly to create. It is only through elevating and loving the best in one another that we will survive those wars together. It is not enough of us to speak superficially of Dr. King's beloved community, we must give the concept death by focusing on the operative word love, by awakening our nation to the sins of racism, confronting racial bias, discrimination and injustice, and transforming our society, most fundamental systems, policies, and institutions. We must go even further to act against the culture of violence. We must act against sexism, homophobia, ableism, ageism, religious bigotry, abuse, corruption, dishonesty, degradation, and manipulation, all in the name of Dr. what Dr. King wanted for all of us, in the name of what we all hold dear. It is only then that what once we was lost, will now be found for us. Thank you so much.